Father Toby and Angela. We're going to uh, finish up the lecture to chapter 14. We're going to take the chapter 14 quiz together as a class. And then we're going to hopefully have time to start the chapter 15 student work. So we'll keep you with us for the whole thing. Uh, so let's just review really quickly because it was last Friday when we did this. So in, these, in this passage, Jesus' monologue uh, to those who were listening, including the Jewish leaders, he claimed deity with God in seven, di seven different areas. He claimed um, equality with God in service. He claimed equality with God in will. He claimed equality with God in intelligence. He claimed equality with God in power. He claimed equality with God in honor. Uh, he claimed equality with God in power to impart life. Uh, and then I think we just had the seventh one left to go. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so when we say that this is proof of his deity, it's because he's claiming to be equal to God. And if he is equal to God, then, then he is deity uh, as well. So the seventh one was he claimed, and I'm going to have you write down what it says here, uh, and then I'm going to kind of talk about it a little bit. But uh, he claimed equality with God uh, in sovereignty to send men to heaven and to hell. Now, I am not going to quibble with God's sovereignty in any way. But I don't think it's just God sending people to heaven or hell. We have a choice uh, that is our own. We are, we, are, um, we are free agents to make a decision. So um, I don't think it's just God saying, I don't like you, you're going to hell. Uh, I have the sovereignty to do that. I, I think it... Uh, we have free will as well uh, and choose to accept or reject. But God is sovereign. Absolutely God is sovereign. Um, so let's read uh, verses 27 through 29. And he has given him authority. So God has given Jesus authority to execute judgment because he is the son of man. Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice, hear Jesus' voice, and come out, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. So we see here this term, son of man. Um, by the way, uh, son of man is the term that Daniel uses for Messiah. And I think that's one of the reasons why Jesus uh, referred to himself frequently as the son of man. Uh, and in this verse, it's one of the places where he calls himself the Son of Man. Here's the thing. He is the Son of Man, and he is the Son of God. He is both at the same time. And as the Son of God, he is qualified to bring God to man, or he is qualified to save people to God. As the Son of Man, as being a human, fully human, um, he is able to understand what it is like to be human. He is qualified to represent people before God. So as a human being, Christ is qualified to, um, to save us because to, uh, to, um, to save us because he too is human. But as God, he is qualified to save us for God. Uh, he, and so that reminds us that he has the power to judge. The Father has committed all judgment the Son, because he is qualified, both as fully God and fully man, he is qualified to do that. Um, and, and he adds to that here that the Father has committed all judgment to the Son because he is the Son of Man, as well as the Son of God. Uh, and because he walked the earth as a human being, experiencing everything we experience, and yet was without sin. He is the one that has the right to judge all people. We're uh, going to enter a, an Olympic year in 2020. Um, I would never be asked to judge gymnastics in the Olympics. Why? 
because I know nothing about gymnastics. I just watch it and go, wow, how do they do that? I'm impressed when they don't fall off the balance beam. I've been on a balance beam. There's no way I would not do a, do a backflip on a balance beam and you land on that sucker. How do you do that? I am not qualified because I've never done gymnastics. Um, the closest I came was one year of ballet when I was five years old and every time uh, we were driving home from ballet, I asked my mother if I could quit now. That's as close as I've ever come. So I am not qualified to be the judge for a gymnast. Jesus is qualified to be our judge because he has experienced everything we've experienced and yet was without sin. And because he's fully God, he has the power to judge and he has the ability to save us before God. And that's what this verse is, is telling us, that he is sovereign and can judge. Now, those are the seven things uh, that show the deity of Christ, ways in which Jesus claimed equality with Christ. Now we're going to switch gears a little bit, uh, and we're going to talk about four witnesses to Christ's deity, four witnesses that claimed that Christ was God. Now, this concept of witnesses is very important in both the Old and New Testaments. Because the law stated that in order for a case to be tried in court, there had to be multiple witnesses. There had to be more than one. Some places it says two, some places it says three, but it, there had to be multiple, multiple witnesses. You couldn't just bring in one guy and say, yeah, he's guilty, I saw him do it, and then convict him. There, you could not secure a victim, uh, uh, excuse me, a, a conviction without multiple witnesses. And their testimony had to agree. So you had to have more than just two witnesses or three witnesses. They had to all say the same thing. Which is one of the reasons why Jesus' trial was illegal. Because they had multiple witnesses, but their testimony did not agree with one another. So to have multiple witnesses was important. In fact, that's why Jesus says what he's about to say, which is this. If I alone bear witness about myself, my testimony is not true. In other words, it's not valid. If I'm the only one testifying about myself, that testimony is not valid. There is another who bears witness about me, and I know that testimony, that the testimony that he bears about me is true. You sent to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. Not that the testimony that I receive is from man, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning he was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his life. It is possible that this whole thing is talking about John the Baptist. It's possible. But it's also possible that the other and John the Baptist are two separate things. Um, and remember, we talked about how the other might be the Holy Spirit. We don't know for sure. But we know that then he goes on to talk about John, John the Baptist, and that John the Baptist is one of the four witnesses. Uh, and so um, uh, John, the, John the Baptist is, is the first one there. When did John testify about Jesus? Baptized him. Okay, so when he baptized him, he, he said, you know, just either after he baptized him, he said, after me comes one who is greater than me um, because he was before me. Uh, and, and I'm not even worthy to untie his sandals or to tie his sandals. Um, but then he also said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He said to his disciples when he saw Jesus, Behold the Lamb of God when, um, uh, who takes away the, the um, sin of the world. So it wasn't so much at his baptism, but it was around that time what he said, what John the Baptist said about Jesus. Um, the second one uh, we see in verse 36, Jesus says this, but the testimony that I have is greater than that of John for the works that the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works that I am doing bear witness about me that the Father has sent me. So Christ's own works were a witness. Why? Because he did things only God can do. Only God can raise the dead. Only God can heal a lame man. Only God uh, can uh, walk on water. Uh, and so yeah, Christ's own works, um, his own miracles prove his deity. His miracles bore witness to his deity. Now, 
How many miracles have we said that G, uh, does John record that Jesus performed? Seven. Seven. Now he he performed many more miracles. It's possible your your curriculum says this. I'm not I am not you know, I'm not going to say there's a hard and fast thing here, but it's possible that he chose seven because the seven seven is the number of perfection, the number of deity. It is possible that that's why he chose seven. We know that he chose seven that show his deity. That much we know, that these were written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you might have life in his name. Have you memorized it yet? Hopefully you've heard me say it enough that you have. Uh, and so um, uh, we, we do know that these miracles showed Christ's deity, and that's why he recorded them. By the way, did I tell you when you're going to have this? This will be on your, on your final exam. So we won't have a verse quiz until then. The last part of your final exam, it looks just like a verse quiz. It's John 1, 1 through 8, and it's blanks. Uh, so it'll be part of your, your final. Um, so, and on a number of occasions, Jesus referred to these miracles as proof that he was more than a mere man, proof that he was Messiah. Jesus' works told who he was. They were a witness to who he was. Can that be said of our work? Our works bear witness to who we are. Our works bear witness uh, about our integrity, about our character. I'm going to pick on someone. She's going to be really angry. I almost never have to carry anything into practice because every day Grace lays like four or five different things on her shoulders and never complains and says, I can do this. I'm like, I can carry something, Grace. No, you can't. See, that work, that shows her character. It shows that she's a servant and that she loves well. And she doesn't want me to like fall over and have a heart attack because I'm carrying too much, right? So uh, those works bear witness to who Grace is. What we do, the way we behave, bears witness to who we are. is the way I'm living my life say about my character say about my relationship with Jesus sorry to pick on your grace but it was just too easy um, so that's the second one the third one is the father in verses 37 and 38 Jesus says this and the father who sent me has himself borne witness about me his voice you have never heard his form you have never seen and you do not have his word abiding in you for you do not believe the one whom he has sent. When did the Father testify about Jesus? There are two possibilities here. The first one is at um, Jesus' baptism. This is my beloved son. You know, um, in him I am well pleased. But we don't know, I and mean, he says his voice you have never heard, so maybe they hadn't heard his voice. So what should have clued them in that Jesus was Messiah? These are the Jewish leaders. What should have clued them in? The Old Testament? Yes. Yes. I read um, the Jesus Storybook Bible to my seniors. Um, it's a children's Bible. There's a beautiful children's Bible that shows the Bible as a continuous story. One continuous story, as I've told you before, the entire Old Testament is a neon sign saying Jesus. And the, and the Jesus Storybook Bible does a beautiful job of, of showing that, of showing how the Old Testament. And, and Jesus says, You search the scriptures, but you don't understand because it's those scriptures that are talking about me over and over and over again. We see Jesus in every story, in every prophecy, in all over the Old Testament. Jesus, God, excuse me, God had prepared them to recognize Messiah when he came. They knew the scriptures. They had them memorized. And yet they missed it. Um, and, and they didn't accept the Messiah when he was right there in front of them. Why? Because they, they knew it, but they didn't know it. They had it memorized, but they didn't understand it. So, uh, in the Old Testament scriptures, he testified about Jesus. 
and at Christ's baptism. Here's the thing. There are a whole lot of people that know the Bible, but they don't know Jesus. Um, those are all commentaries by men and women who know the Bible and love Jesus. But I could list for you many theologians who have PhDs in systematic theology, theology in the Old Testament and New Testament. They don't believe it. They don't believe any of it. They just like to study. They don't know anything about Jesus. They don't trust, well, they know everything about Jesus, but they don't trust him. They're not uh, re redeemed by him. Knowing about the Bible, knowing about God, knowing about Jesus is not the same thing as knowing Jesus. I know a lot about Donny Osmond. I'm going to say Donny Osmond because today is his birthday. I know that today is his birthday. I know how old he is. I know how tall he is. You have no idea who Donny Osmond is, but trust me, I do. Um, he was was the teen idol of my day. Um, and um, I've met him, but I don't know him. I don't know him. Um, and so uh, you can know a lot about someone with not actually knowing them. If you walked in here right now, I don't even know I was a fan because I would freak out. Um, but he wouldn't know. That's how some people are with God and with God's Word. And they know a lot about God's Word, but they refuse to submit their lives to it. They refuse to live <coughs> by what God's Word says. Here's the thing. Obedience brings blessing. Disobedience brings heartache. And God is gracious enough opportunity to choose what you'll do. You'll obey, take what you know and live it, or you'll disobey. When Josh was far from God, my prayer for him was this. I, I would often tell him, I'm praying for you, son. And every time he said, I'll never ask you to stop doing that. And every time I would think, thank you, no, no, no. Here's my prayer. Whatever it takes, God. Whatever it takes. Draw me. I even prayed one time, God, if, it, if taking me would bring him back, take me out. I was, I was willing to die for him to come back to Christ. Um, because I knew. And, and I also knew that it might take something tragic. I didn't want it to take something tragic. But I knew it was better for him to get arrested or get a girl pregnant or something like that than for, for him to die not knowing Christ. For if something like that would bring him back to Christ, that that was better than him dying. Sin is pleasurable for a season, but that season always ends. So that's what he's saying here. You search the scriptures. Because it, and, and, and you think you're finding life, but you're not. You're not. Um, 
Um, so the next one uh, we find, the next witness we find, or the last witness, uh, is the word of God. And we find that in verses 39 through 47, which is where he says this. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is they that bear witness about me. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. I do not receive glory from people, but I know that you do not have the love of God within you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you'll receive him. How can you believe when you receive glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from God, only God? Do you think that I will accuse you to the Father? There is one who accuses you, Moses, on whom you have set your home. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote of me. But you do not believe his writings. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? So the final witness is, is the word of God. Uh, the word of God is the final witness. Uh, because it testifies, the Old Testament testifies about who he is. Jesus isn't, in some versions it says, the ESV gets it right, isn't saying search the scriptures. He's not commanding them to search the scriptures. He's saying you're doing that. These people that he's talking to devoted their lives to searching the scriptures. They knew it backwards and forwards. They had it memorized. But they missed the truth. They missed the meaning of it. Because as I've told you before, the entire Old Testament is a neon sign of saying Jesus. Um, and and they test those Old Testament scriptures are all about him. I'm in Daniel right now. Actually, I've been going through... Um, the prophets for a number of months now. And, and it is shocking how accurately they portray Jesus uh, down to minute details. Uh, and, and they knew this, and now here's Jesus in front of them living it out, and they miss it. They knew the scriptures. They had head knowledge of the scriptures. But those were just facts. We can know the Bible without memorizing. It's tragic. But head knowledge is not the same thing as knowing Jesus. Knowing about the Bible is not the same thing as knowing Jesus. Um, and so if I could leave you with one application, it's this. Get to know Jesus. Don't just get to know the Bible. Don't just memorize eight verses to get a grade. This chapter 14 quiz. Uh, I'm going to we're going to do this together as a class, and then uh, we'll start getting whatever done we can on chapter 15 uh, and uh, the student work, and um, then we'll finish that up tomorrow. in which Christ claimed equality with the Father. What's the first one? In service. In service. In service. What's the second one? In will. in will. In service, in will. What's the third one? In intelligence. In, intelligence. in service, in will, and in intelligence. What's the fourth one? In power, in power, in service, in will, in intelligence, in power. What's the fifth one? In honor. In honor, in service, in will, in intelligence, in power, and in honor. What's the sixth one? In the power to impart life. In the power to impart life. In the power to impart life. So 
in service, in will, in intelligence, in power, in honor, and in power to impart life. And what's the last one? In sovereignty. In sovereignty. Oh, well, yeah. In sovereignty. I just put in sovereignty. Uh, so in service, in will, in intelligence, in power, in honor, in power to impart life, and in sovereignty. Who is the first witness to Christ's deity that we talked about? John the Baptist was the first one listed. John the Baptist. Who was the second, or what was the second? Christ's own works. Christ's own works. So John the Baptist, Christ's own works. The third? The Father. The Father. John the Baptist, Christ's own works, the Father, and the fourth one? The Word of God. The Word of God, meaning Old Testament prophecy, and I would put that in um, uh, parentheses next to it. The Word of God, Old Testament prophecies. So John the Baptist, Christ's own works, the Father, and the Word of God. Uh, remember I told you I would give you this answer if you saw it on a quiz. The word quicken means to see make alive. That is a word that we don't usually use. But if you at your um, if you at, at, at your churches um, recite the Lord, not the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and you use the kind of old time way to do that, it says He will come to judge the quick and the dead. And when I was a kid, I was like, Are we, you know, fast people gonna uh, be judged? That means the lot, the living and the dead, the living and the dead. Uh, and then, how many of Christ's miracles were recorded by John the Apostle? Seven. That's deep. Now, before we write this essay, um, I want us to talk about it. I want us to discuss it, and then I'll let you write down whatever you want to write down based on our discussion. Uh, explain what Christ meant when he said to the Pharisees, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. What did he mean by, first let's start with, what did he mean by search the scriptures? The Old Testament. Well, he meant, he meant in the ESV is, is a better translation, you search the scriptures. He's not commanding them to search the scriptures. He's saying this is what you already do. So what, is, what does he mean by search the scriptures? What were they doing? Yeah, they, they had it memorized. They knew the old, what we call the Old Testament backward and forward. They searched the scriptures. They knew it well. They had devoted their lives to studying the scriptures. That's a good thing, right? But what's the problem then? And that's what makes or gives them eternal life. Okay, they think they thought that was what gave them eternal life. What gave them eternal life in reality? Jesus. Jesus. The one about the whom the scriptures speak. So they knew the words of the Old Testament, but they missed the whole point of it. They knew the scripture in their heads, but not in their hearts. The Old Testament scriptures testified about Messiah, about Jesus as Messiah. And here he is standing in front of them and they rejected him. Why? Because they did not understand. They did not believe what the scriptures really said. They didn't know. They knew about the scriptures, but they didn't really know them. They knew about the scriptures, but they didn't really know them. They didn't know who Jesus was. Sorry. 